Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin tonight with exact track 4D radar and the threat of storms heading into tonight. There is a big change coming right behind it. Now to brand new video from Chicago where that same system left damage from high winds and heavy rain and that storm continues blowing to the east. Now to live pictures from Grand Haven on the west side of the state. The waves are blowing in off Lake Michigan. Change is coming. Thanks for joining us. I'm Damon Fernandez in for Devin Skillion tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm Karen Drew in for Kimberly Gill. Now we want to get over to Brian Sherman right now off the top. Brian, Chicago really got hit hard on this. Are we expecting a repeat performance on this? Yeah, Karen and Damon, I think we could see some strong to severe thunderstorms this evening. We've already had one round of rain move in earlier this afternoon. Exact track 40 radar, a clean sweep across southeastern Michigan for the moment, though. I'm keeping my eyes to our south and west where thunderstorms are already developing in northwestern Ohio and northeastern Indiana and then a strong line of thunderstorms right around Kalamazoo with plenty of lightning storms today will be moving from the southwest to the northeast and we could see that threat for severe weather all the way through the late evening hours tonight. We have rebounded with some sunshine over in Southfield this afternoon that has sent our temperature into the low 80s again 81 right now here in Detroit 79 over in Ann Arbor 80 right now as you work into Lapeer and 82 working down into Monroe. We'll keep the option open for thunderstorms all the way through the late evening hours tonight. We drop into the 60s by early tomorrow morning before we say goodbye to the humidity heading into the end of the week as well. I'll break down our severe threat for tonight and the rain chances continuing. Your complete 41 forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Our other top story right now at five, Dan and Jennifer Gilbert are pledging nearly $400 million to help build a new facility at Henry Ford Hospital. Yeah, the gift is in honor of their late son, Nick, who passed away in May from neurofibromatosis. Mara McDonald is live at the hospital right now for us. Mara, we understand that money is going into two major care directions. That's right, Damon. And the first one is going to be a 72 bed facility here that deals with Physical medicine, physical rehab, something that Dan Gilbert himself knows all too well after a 2019 stroke. The pledge of nearly $400 million from the Gilbert Family Foundation to Henry Ford comes on top of the $500 million the Gilberts have already pledged to the city of Detroit. The money that's going to the medical system comes from the personal pain and grief the family has been through. When I suffered from my stroke back in 2019, I sought out the best care in the country and found it in Chicago at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. Gilbert's bringing a Shirley Ryan Ability Lab to Detroit as part of Henry Ford. It's to help those recovering from things like stroke, traumatic brain injury, and other conditions. While there, I met many other patients who could not get all the rehabilitative care they needed because their insurance limited the number of hours covered. This is too often the experience for Detroiters as well. To that end, the Gilberts are giving $10 million to establish a fund to help low-income patients get the help they need. The second part of this landmark gift is to help those with neurofibromatosis, what their son Nick suffered from. He passed away in May. Detroit will also become the leader in neurofibromatosis research through the establishment of the Nick Gilbert Neurofibromatosis Research Institute, named in honor of our son, who passed away from complications of NF in May. Back here live, the expectation is, is that the build out of all of this is going to be completed by 2029. We're live outside Henry Ford. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, thank you. And ahead of 530, we're going to be talking live with the Henry Ford Health CEO, Bob Riney, to get a sense of how much of a game changer this pledge really is for the city of Detroit and the whole region. Michigan State Police say the person you see right here torched and shot out multiple patrol cars overnight in Sault Ste. Marie. Victor Williams live on the story for us tonight. Victor, luckily nobody was injured here, but what a story. Yeah, that's right, Karen. Even though no one was hurt, MSP is still taking this very seriously. Four of our patrol cars um, had been doused with some type of accelerant and then shot at by somebody holding a long gun. Lieutenant Mike Shaw with MSP is one of the officers wondering who would target several patrol cars at a station in the UP. They reviewed uh, video camera tapes and found that it was a white male with a long gun uh, driving a Honda CRV, silver in color. Uh, for some reason, 
fired upon those cars and then fled the scene. Investigators are trying to connect the dots on clues they have to figure out who exactly this person is. Right now, detectives up there are, are looking through video. Uh, they're trying to do some other things uh, to try to get a license plate, take a look to see who is the person behind this car uh, and find out a motive for exactly why this occurred. Thankfully, no officers were hurt considering the fact that they're in their vehicles most of the day. We're pretty mobile base in our patrol car, so a lot of the report writing, things like that, actually happened in the patrol car. Uh, so we're very fortunate that nobody was in those four vehicles. The person responsible is yet to be caught. At one point, MSP was asking people to stay away from their stations as best they could. But now operations have gone back to normal. Anybody that's willing to fire upon a state police post um, isn't too worried about the public. Now, if anyone can identify the man pictured state police, they want to hear from you at 1-855-MISH-TIP. That's 1-855-642-4847. Victor Williams, Local 4. Hope they catch the guy. All right, thanks, Victor. Former Grand Rapids police officer charged in the killing of Patrick Leoya took his case to the Michigan Court of Appeals. Yeah, Christopher Scherf faces a second degree murder charge in connection to the shooting back in April of last year. Megan Woods is following this case today. Megan, his attorneys are claiming that the shooting was justified. He's claiming it's a self-defense. So just to give a little more context, Schur's attorney had appealed a judge's decision late last year that there was enough probable cause to um, take this trial or take this case to trial. And now that case has been or that appeal has been denied. And he took that request to the Michigan Court of Appeals. And that's what brings us to today. A panel of three judges listened. People versus us. Aren't we bound by that? And that sets the standard for a police officer in these situations. And asked questions as the defense, Christopher Schur's attorney, argued that the traffic stop as a whole is not being considered. Stop was lawful. The arrest was lawful. There was no allegation that, even by the people, uh, that he had violated the law or the constitutional rights. Mr. Leoya, except for the very end. At some point, the officer has some constitutional rights too, and has a right to due process, and that includes looking at everything that occurred leading up to his decision. Yet Kent County's assistant prosecutor says she can point out how the moments leading up to Leoya's death were unreasonable. And that's exactly what Doss says, that we have to submit this to a jury when there's conflicting evidence about the reasonableness of someone's actions with respect to self-defense. She explains that if the Court of Appeals sides with the defense, they have to consider the precedents it will set. And to say that an officer can lawfully use deadly force against someone who merely shoves them, that, that what that means in the course of this case is that Officer Sure could have shot and killed Mr. Leoya almost at the instant he started running away. And that's not the law and that's never been the law. So the Michigan Court of Appeals plans to release their decision at a later date. They didn't specify when, but if the request is denied, uh, uh, Schur's attorney could go to the Michigan Supreme Court. So we just have to wait to see what that decision is. Reporting live, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Okay, Megan, thanks for that update. Right now, we are a little more than 24 hours away from kickoff. The Detroit Lions and the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs set to kick off the season on national television right here on Local 4. All right, folks, now take a look at live pictures from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. You can be sure the stadium is going to be rocking come tomorrow night. The hype is through the roof, really. The expectations are high. Let's just say it. It is time for some football. It is time for football. Now, Bernie is live in Kansas City tonight, right in front of Arrowhead. Hey there, Bernie. How's it feeling out there? Uh, warm, very warm, but uh, can't wait. I mean, this, this town has, has as much anticipation as Detroit does, but they have anticipation for another reason. Big tight end. Travis Kelsey hurt yesterday in practice, hyperextended his knee. They're letting him rest today. There was no damage to the knee, no damage to the ligaments. Some feel he will play. We've got highlights of Kelsey, who is really one of the big weapons in that Kansas City offense, loved by Patrick Mahomes. They're going to let him rest, as they said, and we'll see how he feels tomorrow. Chiefs were favored by six and a half. Kelsey gets hurt. The line drops to four and a half. As for the Lions, Dan Campbell says the atmosphere at Arrowhead will be humongous.
but it's going to be somewhat hostile and everybody's against you and uh, the only ones rooting for you are your own guys you know your coaches um and and everybody else is is just dying for you to to mess it up it's making a crazy environment uh you know it's kind of like probably like one of those college type feels like fans going crazy and uh you know i'm just excited for it it should be it's going to be an 8 20 kickoff tomorrow night our coverage begins at 6 30 kids back to you in the studio i'll see you a little bit in sports when we'll hear from jason kelsey of the eagles he talked to his brother about the knee we'll have that for you coming up all right looking forward to it thanks bernie Local 4 is all in on the Lions from our live pregame show from Kansas City's Arrowhead Stadium to our exclusive insider watch party right here in Detroit. Yeah, we're the only station giving you the full game experience. Tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. you'll see one-on-one -on -one interviews with quarterback Jared Goff, Lions general manager Brad Holmes, and former coach Wayne Fonts. Also on Local 4, NFL play-by-play -play announcer Mike Tirico will be stopping by to break down what the Lions need to do to bring home a win. The kickoff is 8:20, followed by our live post-game coverage from the locker room and the field. All that and more is tomorrow, only on Local 4.